Hello, and welcome to the Italian American Museum of Los Angeles. My name is Mary Gatto, and I'm the museum's director and co-founder. Today, March 19th, is the Feast of St. Joseph, or San Giuseppe. And this year, 2020, we are observing the feast during truly extraordinary times. On March 6th, the IMLA opened a new exhibition, St. Joseph's Tables, Expressions of Devotion, Charity, and Abundance. And while hundreds were able to view the exhibition, Two weeks later, the coronavirus prompted the IMLA to temporarily shut its doors. Since then, St. Joseph's tables across the country have been canceled in response to the virus. The cultural religious tradition of St. Joseph's tables has endured for centuries. It has continued in the face of world wars, depressions, and hardships great and small. Therefore, we found it fitting to share our exhibition with you as the theme central to the tradition, namely charity and concern for others, can it be more pertinent to our times? Who was St. Joseph, and how did the tradition of St. Joseph's Tables begin? St. Joseph is one of the most revered saints in Christianity. He is the husband of the Virgin Mary and the earthly father of Jesus Christ. Despite his prominence, very little is known about St. Joseph's life. He is mentioned only 13 times in the Gospels, and because St. Joseph never speaks in the Bible, he is often referred to as the silent saint. St. Joseph is also known as the catch-all saint. He is a patron saint of immigrants, workers, fathers, unborn children, families, travelers and migrants, expectant mothers, engineers, real estate agents, and craftspeople. St. Joseph was said to be a carpenter by trade, and the saint's iconography often depicts him in a carpenter's shop. His profession figures prominently in the items that are placed on St. Joseph's tables. Just before Jesus was born, Joseph and Mary traveled to Bethlehem to register for the census ordered by Caesar Augustus. They visited inn after inn in search of shelter, only to be turned away, and Jesus was famously born in a stable. This aspect of the nativity story figures prominently in the pageantry of St. Joseph's tables. We also recall that following Jesus' birth, King Herod, who had grown jealous after hearing a rumor of a newborn king, ordered all male children under the age of two living in the vicinity of Bethlehem to be murdered in what is known as the Massacre of the Innocents. According to the Bible, an angel appeared to Joseph in a dream, warning him of the imminent danger and the family fled to Egypt. This is the reason why St. Joseph is a patron saint of immigrants, migrants, and refugees. According to popular belief, the tradition of constructing large altars of food in honor of St. Joseph dates to the Middle Ages, when there was a severe drought in Sicily and the population was on the verge of famine. The only crop that survived was the fava bean, which Sicilians had previously fed to their livestock. The desperate peasants prayed to St. Joseph, and when the rains arrived and they harvested their crops, the peasants made offerings of food to St. Joseph as a sign of gratitude. The food laid in altars became known as Tavole di San Giuseppe, or St. Joseph's Tables. The tradition remains very much alive in Sicily and parts of southern Italy today, where in addition to the elaborate table altars, the feast day is celebrated with processions, an event known as a Cavalcata di San Giuseppe, which reenacts the Holy Family's flight into Egypt, and the Tupa Tupa, a dramatization of the Holy Family's search for shelter. Between 1870 and 1920, some 14 million Italians left their homeland, fleeing poverty, natural disasters, disease, and social inequality. This was one of the largest human migrations in history. Approximately 75% of those who emigrated hailed from southern Italy, especially the region of Sicily. Italian immigrants brought the tradition of St. Joseph's tables to the United States, and today the table altars can be found in all 50 states. St. Joseph's tables assumed a new significance following the immigrants' arrival. They represented their migration journey and their triumph over poverty in addition to their spiritual beliefs. 
St. Joseph's tables have also come to symbolize the preservation of cultural religious traditions. St. Joseph's tables are more than simply altars of food. This ancient living tradition is an expression of charity, community, gratitude, and devotion. St. Joseph's tables take a number of forms, and while they share certain elements, they prove as diverse as their creators. Preparation for a St. Joseph's table begins months in advance, and each table is set into motion by a vow or a promise that the petitioner makes to St. Joseph. They can also embody an expression of gratitude for a prayer that has been answered, such as a loved one being healed from an illness or returning home safely. Although both men and women can petition St. Joseph, women traditionally direct the construction of the altar and all that is placed upon it. Each item placed on the table carries tremendous significance. A statue or image of St. Joseph is displayed at the very top of the altar, as the saint is the altar's focal point, and the image or statue's position signifies St. Joseph's ascendancy. Many St. Joseph's tables are constructed with three tiers as a reference to the Holy Family or the Holy Trinity. Closest to the image of the saint, one finds traditional St. Joseph's breads, the bread's location in proximity to the image of St. Joseph reflects the belief that bread is a divine gift. It is one of the most powerful symbols in Christianity and an important part of Italian culture. It also serves as evidence that hunger has been defeated. The foods considered most sacred in Italian culture, including wine, wheat, and oranges, are positioned closest to the holy image, whereas more secular foods, such as cookies, are placed further away. Wheat, another important Sicilian crop and a divine provision, can be found in various forms on the table, as sheaves, transformed into pasta, and as breadcrumbs, or mudrika, which symbolize the wood shavings found in St. Joseph's carpentry shop. Breadcrumbs are also incorporated into many of the traditional dishes. Because St. Joseph's feast day occurs during Lent, a time when Catholics traditionally abstain from eating red meat and poultry, the foods on the altar are meatless. They include pasta con le sarde, or pasta with sardines, frittate, which are similar to omelets, and vegetables prepared in an endless number of delicious ways. Many altars contain 12 whole fish to symbolize the 12 apostles. Fava beans, both dried and fresh, are placed on the table. Nicknamed the lucky bean, fava beans help Sicilians survive the famine, and they are often distributed at St. Joseph's tables as a good luck charm. You will notice the colors of red, white, gold, and green, colors associated with St. Joseph, are used abundantly. An assortment of irresistible sweets, such as zeppole, which are similar to cream puffs filled with custard, fig cookies known as cucirate, and strufole or pignolate, deep-fried balls of sweet dough, among others, are found on the altar. The foods showcased will feed those who attend the event, while others will be sold and the funds donated to charity. Extending relief to the less fortunate is a key aspect of St. Joseph's tables. According to tradition, all who attend a St. Joseph's table are fed, and no one is turned away. point of this exhibition, the IMLA issued a call for objects, images, recipes, and other items related to St. Joseph's tables. Communities across the country responded. We received contributions from Iowa, New Jersey, New York, Colorado, Missouri, Texas, Louisiana, and right here in California, among other places. The exhibition at the Italian American Museum of Los Angeles also features religious artifacts that reflect St. Joseph's prominence in the devotional lives of Italians and Italian-Americans. A century-old banner from the Congregazione de San Giuseppe, or the St. Joseph's Congregation, a mutual benefit society headquartered at Our Lady of Mount Carmel Church in Pueblo, Colorado, is one such item on display. The St. Joseph's breads are among the most exquisite aspects of the table. The breads take many forms and are referred to by a number of names, including Pana de San Giuseppe, Cucirate, Vastedda, and Squartucciati. 
The large yeast dough breads can weigh upwards of 10 pounds and take the form of many symbolic shapes, such as crosses, St. Joseph's staff or walking stick, ladders, which are associated with the ascent into heaven, wreaths, hammers, and saws, references to St. Joseph the carpenter. The highly decorative but often inedible pastry-like breads, known as squartucciate, cucirate, and vastedda, similarly take many symbolic shapes, including chalices, hearts, to symbolize the sacred heart of Jesus or that of Mary, St. Joseph's sandals, fish, a reference to Jesus, the fisher of men, and dozens of other shapes. To create these breads, a fig mixture is spread on top of a thin sheet of dough. Another layer of dough is placed on top and portions are carved away to create intricate designs. This tradition dates to the Baroque period in Sicily. The century-old, family-owned Di Camillo Bakery in upstate New York was among those who contributed breads to the exhibition. The IMLA also received contributions from bakers across the country. We look forward to reopening our doors and welcoming you back to the IMLA in the near future. Until then, take care of yourselves and please look out for one another.